OpenArt has a feature that lets you create a consistent character. You can then generate images with that consistent character in the images. You can create a character from a single image, from a text description, or if you have four or more images, you can create it from that as well. I made a video recently about how to create characters in OpenArt, and I'll put a link to that in the description. In this video, I want to show you some new ways that you can use that character to create images. One of the new things that OpenArt's added is the ability to pose your character in the image you generate. You can adjust whether you want your character to be standing, sitting, running, or any other possible position. You can also change basically at every joint in the body, whether their elbows bent or their heads turned, whether their hand is pointed in or out, and anything else you can think of. Another nifty new feature lets you place your character in a scene. So you provide it with an image of a scene or a location, and when you generate the image of the character, you tell it what you want your character to be doing where in that scene. You can also use that to put your character in a scene that already has another character in it. So this is a way to get two consistent characters in the same image or scene. We're going to take a look, but first, thanks to OpenArt for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I'm on the OpenArt dashboard. I'll come over to the left-hand menu and click Characters. If you want to create a character, you would select one of these options to start with a description, a single image, or four plus images. I want to use characters that I've already created, which are down here below this My Characters heading. Whichever character I want to create with, I just click the Create button underneath their name and avatar. Now it brings me into the creation page and it has defaulted my character or model to Jimmy, which is the one that I selected. And there's three ways that I can create images with Jimmy in them. I can use the prompt and reference, which is basically where just in the prompt, I'm going to use at Jimmy to indicate I want to use that character. And I'm going to describe what I want Jimmy to be doing. I'll just say Jimmy's walking on the sidewalk in a busy city on a rainy day. If I want a more detailed prompt, which might give me better results, I can click this enhance prompt button and click the quick enhance, it costs one credit. And that takes my simple little prompt and puts a whole lot of detail in it. Now you should look through this prompt because some of the details that it added may be things that you didn't really want in there. You might want to change some of that stuff or take a few things out. Once you're happy with the prompt, the next thing you might want to do is come here and look at the weight. 0.8 is a really good starting point. Increasing the weight should make Jimmy look more like the images you supplied of Jimmy, but it can make some weird things happen and give you some bizarre results, especially if you trained your character with a single image or a description. They've also recently added this setting, strictly keep key character features. And it says when this is turned on, it's really going to try to keep specific features like hairstyle and clothing. Turning it off lets it be a little bit more creative. In my experimentation with this on, it's more likely that your character is going to come out wearing whatever attire they had on in the image or images that you supplied to create it. But I have had some success in leaving this on, but describing something different in the prompt about what my character is wearing. So it's a good idea to experiment with this on and off and see what kind of results you get and what's working for you. With the weight and prompt all squared away, come down and take a look at these other settings. I like to leave prompt enhance mode on auto. This is a great feature in OpenArt. It will take half the images that you generate and automatically enhance those prompts right before it generates them. So if you're generating four images, you'll get two with the prompt that you supplied. In this case, it's already an enhanced prompt and you would get two with the auto enhancement happening. Set the number of images that you want to generate. I'm going with two and click create. And here we have two images of our character Jimmy in the rain in the city. And to give you a point of reference, here's one of the images that I used to train the Jimmy character. I think it's a pretty good likeness. So that's how we generate an image with the basic prompt and reference creation mode. Now let's look at how we can pose our character. I'll leave the character as Jimmy and everything up here the same. I'll just click this pose your character option. And now I get this pose and composition box. I'll just click this open pose editor button and there's a whole lot going on here. Let's start off with the basics by coming over here and where it says female base, drop that down. You have female base, male base, you have a short female or male, an athletic female or male, or a nendroid. I think for Jimmy, we're gonna use a male base. We wanna pick the one that's the most similar to our character. We could come over here right away, click on any one of these points and then make adjustments left, right, in, out, up, down, how things rotate on all these different axes. And basically we're following all the possible movements of a human body at each joint and point. Rather than starting from this pose and working through every single joint to get things just right, we can come over here under pose, drop down this custom, and we have a whole lot of different pose presets that we can pick from. There's a whole bunch of different ways here that we can have the character sitting, leaning, 
dancing, running, on left toes, looking left. I'm pretty sure I'd fall over if I tried that myself. The point is there's a lot of different preset poses that you can pick from that should give you a good start to getting your character positioned how you want them. I'm gonna go with something fairly simple here. I'll just say arms slightly spread. I can still adjust anything. I just click the dot and then click on any one of these colored sphere lines to change the position, angle, pivot, whatever you wanna call it. Say I wanted to make a change to this shoulder joint here. I need to click outside all these editing circles first and then come back in and click that that point. I can also click these four arrows in the center of the canvas and use that to drag the canvas up or down and position my character wherever I want them to be in the image. Over on the right, I can make it a square image, landscape, or whatever other aspect ratio you want. If I just click in the canvas outside of the character, I can change the perspective, tilting it up and down, left and right. So maybe I want to move Jimmy to where he's facing this way in the image. I can also come down here and click this move button. And now I've got all these colorful arrows. So this red one, I can slide Jimmy forward and back, make it look like he's further away or closer to us. I can grab these blue dots and move him left, right, up and down. I can grab the green arrow to move him up and down vertically. And whatever I'm working with, once I click on it, it turns yellow. So the red arrows, they'll be yellow once I'm actually working with them. If I do something I don't like in here, I can always click this little undo button and it takes me back one step at a time. Even with the move selected, I can come click outside the character anywhere and still turn, pivot, change the angle. And I can also use the vertical scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. Once you've got things posed just the way you want them, click this update pose button. It's now defaulted the weight of our character to one and the default for the weight of the pose is 0.65. Depending on how the results come out, you might want to make adjustments to either or both of those. But the next thing we need to do once we've got the pose, how we think we want it, is come down here and give it a prompt. I'm not real sure what kind of prompt goes with this pose because I sort of made up the pose first and that's sort of backwards. So I just said Jimmy standing in an office looking confused. Click create, that'll give us two images and we'll see what happens. While we're at it, let's go ahead and click the enhance prompt, do a quick enhance and we'll run to that way. Sometimes when you use the quick enhance on the prompt, it'll reinforce the way that you pose the character, but other times it might come up with details that don't match what you set up in your pose. So you'll want to double check that and make sure it's not arguing with itself. So this is the pose that we were looking for. These are the first two images, the ones where we use the really short prompt. That looks like Jimmy, he's in an office and that pose looks pretty accurate. I can't complain about what the office looks like because I didn't give it any details for either of these prompts. Here's the second one. It seems to have taken a little bit of liberty here with Jimmy's left arm because his hand is not out sort of in front of him like it was in our pose. And if we wanted that to more strictly follow our pose settings, we could increase this weight on the pose. Now let's see what our enhanced prompt did. These look a little bit more detailed and filled in, although that looks like a really weird chair and I'm not sure why he has this giant knee high table or what's going on with this couch, but it matched the pose pretty closely and it did put him in an office. Here again in this one, the table and even some of the chairs here are just knee high to Jimmy, so that's a little weird. Now I'm no expert on posing or any of the technology behind it. And there are just an infinite number of different ways that you can move and change and rearrange things using this pose feature by adjusting not only every single joint and point in the human body, but also the perspective and the aspect and the closeness or distance and all those things that you can do with this. And I've had some mixed results using the posing. Sometimes it seems to work out just fine. Other times the pose is fairly accurate, but the rest of the scene doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And sometimes it does really strange things like this lady growing through this bench, apparently. My hypothesis is that getting the generation you want is some combination of having the character weight in the right place, the pose and composition weight at the right setting, and having the right prompt for your image. For my generations, I seem to do pretty well just using that prompt and reference workflow where you just reference the character's name and describe what you want them to do. But if you have a situation where you just cannot get the AI to pose your character the way you want, or you need something extremely specific, it's a handy feature to have. 
Now let's look at how we can place our character in an image. I'm still on the image creation page with my character Jimmy selected. You can get there by clicking character over on the left hand menu. Instead of pose your character, I'll just select place your character in an image. The next thing we need to do is click this blue place your character button. Now we'll upload an image. It needs to be at least 1024 by 1024. They give you a few sample scenes here if you want to try it out and don't have a scene in mind. But we're going to bring in an image I created. So we'll click upload image. I'm going to grab this fall scene. And now we have this green box with the word Jimmy in it. Jimmy is the name of our character, so it's asking us, where do you want Jimmy? We can put him anywhere we want in this image. We should probably put him somewhere that maybe makes a little bit of sense. And we can also adjust how big we want Jimmy to be. We can make him, honey, I shrunk the Jimmy all the way up to Jimmy the giant. We'll try the sizing right about here. Come up and click save placement. And now we need a prompt to explain what we want Jimmy to be doing in that scene. And our prompt needs to include this at Jimmy tag. Even though we set up top here that we're using our character Jimmy, now we need to tell it how Jimmy relates to this scene. So I'll just do something simple here like at Jimmy is standing in the park. If you happen to lose your character tag, you accidentally delete it or something like that, don't stress out. You'll see a little message underneath it that says don't forget to add the at tag. And you can just come anywhere in your prompt that you want to put it. Insert the at symbol and you'll get a drop down that lets you click on whatever your character's name is. Mine's Jimmy. So at Jimmy is standing in the park. It defaulted our character weight to 1.2. I'm going to leave it there and see what it does. I'm going to leave everything else as is and click create. Our first image that looks like Jimmy and it looks like he's in the park. And our second image also looks like Jimmy in the park. This character model is really clinging to having Jimmy wear a green shirt and I don't know, a blue or dark gray blazer. I created the Jimmy model with six images images and there was only one where he was wearing something that looked similar to this, but that really must have just stood out for the AI. If I wanted him to be wearing something different, I could specify that in the prompt. And like I said, even with this setting up here, the strictly keep the character features set to on, I have had good luck in describing different clothing and it actually coming out with the clothing I describe. But for this image, I'm perfectly happy with how Jimmy's dressed. Now I want to take this image and I want to put another consistent character right here next to Jimmy. I want to make sure it's a really good high quality image. So I'm going to click on ultimate upscale. I don't really want it changing anything about this image. I just want it higher quality. So I'm going to leave it on precise upscale. Click create. It's upscaled now to 4096 by 2320. That should be good. I'll go ahead and download that. I'm going to go back to characters. And this time I want to create with Maria, another character. And this is a character I created with one single image. And this is that image that I used to create the character Maria. I'm going to click on place character in image, place your character, upload image, grab that image we just upscaled of Jimmy in the park. And now we have Maria and I'd like Maria to be standing next to Jimmy. Now it says to make sure that the area matches your prompt and has appropriate spacing. So if I have the green box for Maria here, it wouldn't make sense then in my prompt to say Maria's sitting in a lawn chair in the grass far away. So I'll put it there and I think I should make it a little bit smaller probably. I'll say save placement. Now we need to give it a prompt. It starts us off with the at Maria tag. How about Maria is standing next to her husband in the park posing for a photograph. We'll click create. The one on the left seems to have a lot of blurriness going on. Maybe it's just me. Not a super terrific likeness of Maria and I'm not crazy about what she's doing with her left hand in this pocket, I guess in that sweater. Something just looks off about that one. This version came out a little bit better, although it kind of looks like Maria is standing a step in front of Jimmy there. So let's go back and make a couple of tweaks here. Let's modify the position a bit. I want to make sure the box for Maria is right next to Jimmy. And then I'll make sure she used the same height here, about the same height as Jimmy so that it doesn't think it needs to move her forward in perspective. We'll save placement on that. Now let's take a look at this prompt. One thing I notice is that Maria is not looking as much like like my provided image as I would like her to. Something I've found when you're working with a character you created from a single image is that it helps if you add in your prompt any of the details that it seems to be missing. Like it seems to be making Maria much younger than she actually was in the image I provided. So I'm just gonna add a middle-aged woman in front of Maria. See if I can't dial in that age a little bit better. I'm not crazy about this one or this one really. Let's go back to this position. I'm going to move her over. We're going to try a little bit of overlap here and see what we can get. Save placement. Ended up wiping out my whole prompt by accident, but that's okay. We'll do the at symbol to get Maria. A 58 year old woman with long dark hair and olive skin is standing next to her husband posing for a photograph during autumn in a park. 
Let's hit create on that. Maria is starting to look more like Maria and it looks like they're actually standing together. Not sure if this daylight between them down here really makes sense with Jimmy's physique, but maybe it's okay. Oh, now this one looks much better. That actually looks like Jimmy and Maria were in the same place at the same time. How about that? And once you get your characters together in an image, remember open art now has image to video. Any image that you want to turn into a video, just come up here and click this image to video button. Choose the model. They started with Kling, but they have now also added Hilu, the standard and the live, which is better for 2D art, not realistic things. Add in a prompt to describe what you want your characters to do, adjust the creativity level. They now offer five and 10 second duration for Kling. And they've also added the option to use the pro mode in Kling. Once you've got everything set the way you want it, click create. And in that generated video where we have them embrace, we learn that Jimmy has a third hand. Now I put my characters, Jimmy and Maria together in some other images like this one, where I started by creating an image of Jimmy standing there. Then I generated an image using the Maria character, placing her in this scene. And I think this one turned out really well. Here's another version of that one that wasn't as good, but still probably acceptable. I also created a few images of Jimmy sitting at a table in a restaurant. I ended up using this one and then generated using the Maria character and this base image to have Maria join Jimmy at the table. Some of those turned out better than others. And after I got Maria into a few of these images, I realized I probably should have had Jimmy looking a different way so that it looked like he wasn't completely ignoring her. And then we have this random dude that just shows up in the back. But a couple of them turned out pretty well, even though I have Jimmy sort of staring off into the distance, ignoring her. I'm pretty sure I've just scratched the surface on what we can do now that we can pose our consistent characters and place a consistent character in a scene or create an image with a consistent character, then use that image as a base to put one consistent character in an image with another consistent character. I hope this helps you be creative. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.